Hey, what's up? This is Justin, the Lesser Dog Tutorials, and this is part six in the Elden Ring Souls-like clone tutorial series for Unreal Engine 5. And last time we were working in this project, we created the block ability. So if we were to test that out, you can see the character blocks and then they run, they can block and jumping gets rid of it. But you can see that the character is leaning forward quite a bit and it makes the shield kind of point down instead of straight out. So we can actually tweak it because I don't want the character really to be leaning this forward anyway when they run. So if we bring the spine up, it should level everything out a little bit more and not look so strange. So let's get going with that. If we go to characters, mannequins, animations, and then Manny, we can see the mm underscore run underscore forward. And if you select the spine zero one, then we can just turn off the snapping of the rotation up here, but we're just going to bring the spine up a smidge and then click the key button up here. And that should apply this animation, additive animation change which may solve our problems. Let's see what it looks like. So if we test it out, you can see now that the spine is up a little higher. The character is running it more upright and they're holding the shield um, in a way that appears a little more like they're defending something. We can actually even add an additive um, animation change to the shield or the block animation too. So let's go ahead and do that. So in the Rune Retriever folder, animations, block shield, we can select the left arm. So we'll find where that should be. So upper arm L, clavicle, okay. So clavicle underscore L, I'm going to just rotate it up a smidge. And I think that's good. Yeah, I think I like that. So I'm going to add that key, save it, and we'll see how that looks. Yeah, that feels better. Sweet. So now we have a much better looking block, and now we can start implementing the role. So as with any ability, we just want to create a new gameplay ability. Right here. And we'll just call this GA underscore role. And if we open up role, this won't be too complicated. Um, we just want to first commit the ability right there. But after we commit the ability, what we want is a play montage um, node. And what this is going to do is play an animation montage and an animation montage is just something that can like combine animations, it can add sound cues, it can add particle effects, it can do a lot of stuff. But for our purposes, we don't really need it to be too confusing. So let's head over to our anim dive roll animation. And if you right click, we can create anim montage right up here at the top. So go to create and then create anim montage. And we can name it just maybe M, maybe M-O-N-T, underscore, dive, roll. So now we have the montage, and we head back over to the gameplay ability, and then in the dropdown, we'll see our montage right here, and we can select that. Now to get the skeletal mesh that we want to, to play this montage, we just need to get the actor info, and then we can break this. And then all we're looking for, if you hit the dropdown, is the skeletal mesh component. So we drag that up there, then we can collapse this. And now we can say that we're going to end the ability. Because the roll ends when the animation is done. So play montage is going to be the thing that drives this ability so that when this montage is over, the ability is over. So we don't want the top connection to be connected because this happens um, every frame, I believe. We want on completed, blend outs, and on interrupted. So now if any of those happen, the ability ends. 
So if we compile and save, we can head over to the third person character blueprint. We're going to very quickly in the class defaults, we're going to add this ability to the default abilities. So we'll add role. And then if we go to the role section, we can delete these. And just like the others, we want to activate the abilities by tag. So I'll just copy these two, paste them here. And I don't know, I think maybe only when it started it could perform, but we'll just leave it untriggered for now. Then we can right click the gameplay tag container, promote it to a variable, and we'll call that the role tag container. And then for the role tag, let's go ahead and create that. We'll compile. And then we will add player action. So I'll just click this here. So it's player.action.role. And then we got to make sure that on the gameplay ability for a role, we're looking for that specific tag so that it can fire when we hit it. So with this kind of setup, very quickly, let's see if it actually works. So I'm in the game, I'm hitting R, and it looks like the role has already been implemented. Very easy, but of course, it's not really listening to anything else. You hit it over and over again, it just keeps rolling. Um, so obviously we have to say when it happens and while it's happening, we can't do it again, things like that. So let's figure that stuff out. So like the block ability, where we apply a gameplay effect of is blocking to the owner, why don't we go ahead and create a gameplay effect for roll and say is rolling is applied while the character is rolling. So we'll just add a gameplay effect just like that, and we'll say GE underscore is rolling. We can kind of go into what this does later. Maybe somehow it can prevent all damage or something like that, but really all we're going to need to do in this is grant a tag, and we'll add it to the character section. So we'll say character dot is rolling. Um, enemies could roll, I suppose. They may not, but it's better just to have it there just in case. So then we will compile and save. And then in the role gameplay ability, right after we commit it, we can apply gameplay effect to owner and select our is rolling effect. So now we're applying the is rolling effect while we're rolling. And then when we end the ability, we probably want to remove that. So let's remove gameplay effect from owner with granted tags. And this actually, if we just put it on on end ability, then this will fire right after the ability ends. And we can search for is rolling and that should get rid of the gameplay effect. So now we know that while we're rolling, we have is rolling active. So in the class defaults, we can say activation is blocked if we have is rolling applied to the character. So now we can't roll um, until the rolling has been finished. So let's test it out and see if that actually works. I'm going to roll and hit roll again. Okay, so it does actually keep doing it. Let's see what the debug says. Okay, so it's not actually applying it to the character. So let's figure out why that gameplay effect isn't actually working. Okay, so the reason it's not working is that the duration policy on the is rolling gameplay effect is on instant. Again, we need to make sure it's infinite because it will always be applied until we say when it's no longer applied. So now if we test it, it should function correctly. We're rolling, you hit, hit R again. It won't actually roll until the roll has finished. So that's a good first step, but you can see, you know, in the middle of a roll, you can jump. Obviously, we don't want to do that. 
Um, so let's figure that out. It really should be as easy as saying in the activation block tags is airborne is going to be an other thing that we want to block. So if you're in the air, we can't roll. And then we could actually go over to the jump ability and say that this is blocked when we are rolling. So player dot is, or sorry, character dot is rolling blocks the jump. So there's one problem figured out. I can't jump while I'm rolling. And if I'm airborne, I can't roll. Um, if we look at the debug, we can see that we're blocking. And if we roll, we're still blocking. Again, we don't want to be blocking while we're rolling. So let's figure that one out. So all we need to do is say, open up the gameplay effect for is rolling. And then in the remove gameplay effects with tags in the added section, we want to remove character dot is blocking. And then over in the gameplay ability for block, we want to have this activation blocked tags and say that if the character is rolling, then we cannot block. So during the whole duration of rolling, it won't trigger the block. And when we start rolling, we stop blocking. Let's check that one out. Okay, so we're blocking, I'll roll, and now when you roll, it stops blocking. And then when the roll is over, rolling goes away and blocking comes back. So we got it figured out. You don't roll in the air. You don't, you can't jump when you're rolling. You can't block when you're rolling. And then when you roll, it, it interrupts the block. So the rolling ability has been implemented. Up next is going to be attacking. So if you like the video, please hit like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.